Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in today's vlog you will see my interview with Thomas Bronswaar about his classic Constellation. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. All right, here it is, the story behind Constellation, my interview with Thomas Bronswaar. Enjoy. Dutch DJ and producer Thomas Bronswaar is a well-known name in the trance scene since the year 2003. Under his own name Thomas Bronswaar, he released tracks such as Shadow World, Resound and the track we discussed in my previous interview with him, Close Horizon. For this week's vlog I sat down with Thomas to talk with him about Constellation. My first question to Thomas was if he could share the story behind this track. Ah. It's a good story behind that track and maybe my favorite story. So the story is that uh, for Constellation I once sat down and gave myself a challenge. I said, would it be possible to create a track in one weekend and sign it to a label? You know, can I do one weekend worth of work and get a full release uh, out of this? So I sat down, I uh, produced really hard for two days in a row. And you know, when you listen to Constellation, I think you can kind of tell that it's simple in some ways. And it's, I really like that actually. It's like a, when you make a meal, you just take a few really fresh ingredients, chop them up and that's it, you know, that's enough. That's how it felt for me. So I, I made that track and then I was like, all right, well, is this good enough? You know, is anybody going to sign this? So I sent it to my good friend, John O'Callaghan. And I said, you know, I told him this story. I was like, hey, man, you know, I wanted to see, can I do this in the weekend? And uh, he's like, oh, well, you know, I appreciate your idea of trying to be efficient and doing a quick weekend's work, uh, worth of work. But uh, nah, this track really, it's no good, man. I mean, you can tell that it was put together quickly. So, so John didn't really like the idea, and uh, but I decided to send it to some labels anyway. So um, I sent it to Armada and they didn't want it. Uh, I sent it to United and they didn't want it. And then I sent it to Vandit Records and they didn't respond. So at that point I gave up. <laughs> I said, well, this track experiment failed, right? Um, interestingly enough, a few months later, I was uh, in Central Park at a special Paul Van Dyke live gig in Central Park. And out of nowhere, in the middle of his live set, I hear Constellation. <laughs> I hear my own track. And I was just absolutely blown away. You know? I was like, I, I, maybe he does like it, so he's playing it. You know, they, they, they never responded. So then I sent them an email. I sent an email to Vandit. saying, like, hey, you know, Paul played this track that I sent to you guys, but you never responded. What's the deal? Oh, yeah, yeah, we like this track. We want to sign it, whatever. So then I go to uh, United and I was like, hey, you know, Vandit wanted it. So oh, now they wanted it too. <laughs> So now everybody wanted to sign it and I had to start sort of haggling and uh, negotiating to see and it ended up being a joint deal I think with Vandit and, uh, and United but uh, yeah quite a big turnaround. Yeah. And there, there's a remix from John O'Callaghan, right? That's right, yes. Yeah, he first didn't like the track. <laughs> no, he, uh, he was involved from the beginning. Uh, he did come around eventually and he said, oh, it is good. And then he made a remix that was uh, where he did take the time to really polish, the, as he always does, to make a very well-rounded and polished production, as opposed to my mm -hmm. quickly thrown together, but mm -hmm. still fresh uh, version, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you still remember something of the production process of, of Constellation? Yeah, yeah, I remember, um, uh, as I said, I, it came together quickly. I didn't question every move uh, for very long, as I normally tend to do. Uh, and so, um, quickly chose sounds for the kick and the clap and, and, and the bass line. Uh, I used this, um, uh, I had an Access Virus synthesizer hardware at the time, and I used Korg Legacy Cell. VST sound. There was an often used trans lead in there that I myself and other producers used a lot at the time. Yeah, I think those are the things that stick out. Yeah. Do you still have some of the old equipment? I no longer have my uh, my Access Virus. Uh, you, uh, today I'm sort of all in the box. I still use uh, Cubase, still the same sequencer uh, I use as in those days, but I don't think any physical piece of equipment has actually oh. carried over uh, oh. from oh. those days. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the track uh, came out, so what did happen after the release? 
After the release, uh, interestingly enough, the track that nobody wanted to sign initially ended up doing really, really well. Um, for some re weird reason, I still don't know how this happened, but it ended up in the Dutch national top 100 of singles at that time at the chart. So I'd read something like 47 Snoop Dogg, 48 Thomas Bronzeware, <laughs> <laughs> 49 Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's just crazy. Uh, so I got this email from, from United saying, hey, you're in the top 100 and whatever, and it was a kind of a big deal, and I got a lot of money from that too, comparatively speaking, because I think uh, the Dutch publishing organization, Buma Stemra, mm -hmm. they look at the top 100 to distribute general music income that way. Yeah. So it ended up being the most profitable track too, by yeah. far, out yeah. of everything I've released. Yeah. So the track you worked one weekend on that nobody wants to sign is your most successful track. <laughs> Exactly, and there's a lesson in there, kids. Yeah, <laughs> I love stories like this. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what is your personal highlight when it comes to the release of Constellation? Well, the highlight must be that day when I was in Central Park and suddenly I hear those beats in Paul Van Dyke's set, you yeah. know, in a few seconds. I'm like, is that really my beats? It's like, yeah. yes, it is. Uh, like that. that was a, truly a highlight, yeah. I would say. Yeah, that must have been like unreal. Yeah, it yeah. was. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we already uh, spoke about John O'Callaghan. Um, yeah, you and John uh, used to work together under the name Lost World. Um, do you remember how the two of you got to meet each other? I think we met through Raz Nitsen, who has a label and has been active very long, writing big trans tracks himself. And he knew John, I think, and John was working on a project where he needed his he wanted some help writing an extra layer of melody on it or something. He had a track partially complete and for some reason, I think it was through RAS, they asked me to supply like a, a melody layer for mm -hmm. him. So I did and, and he was happy and we stayed in touch ever since. Yeah. So do you think there will ever be plans to resurrect the Lost World alias with John? I hope so. That's uh, I think that would be really really cool it's yeah. kind of uh, I haven't spoken to John about that recently but uh, I think that's definitely something I would be up for it for yeah. sure yeah so John if you're watching you know what to do with yeah it. it's let me know yeah so uh, are there any other artists you would love to work with one day there's so many I mean too many to name uh, I would love to work with my some of my old collaborators again so you mentioned John already there was uh, Paul Moulins uh, who's doing relocate and many other projects uh, Galen Bear, who was Passiva yeah. and, uh, and in other tracks. Love to work with any of those guys again. Um, in terms of artists now, yeah, I mean, so many, uh, many talented people, good yeah. God. Uh, people like Paul Thomas or uh, Snyder, it's uh, uh, yeah, lots of names I would love to work yeah. with. Yeah, no, like Paul Bullens, you, you guys said, was like Starburst and Pro Profound? Yep, that's exactly right. The, yeah. Those were uh, our first releases yeah, yeah I, th I think th those were doing pretty well uh, as well right they were yeah I think that was one of the first captivating one of the first uh, armada you know, well in, the f in their first year or so at least right they, they had the, the ye yellow cover I think and the yellow cover yes that's yeah. exactly right I think, yeah, Tiesto, Armin, I, think, I think all of them were playing that those tracks yeah it was um, yeah it went really well for us it did yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, during the years you did a bunch of remixes as well. Uh, you got to remix tracks for artists such as uh, Armand van Buren, Giuseppe Ottaviani, Sequence, DJ Echo and of course John O'Callaghan. Um, what is your own favorite remix? I really like the uh, remix I made for Armin. Uh, of course that was a very special opportunity to get a chance. It was Armin and Sean Tyus, uh Intricacy was the track. Um, was a track I really liked. It had kind of a unique melody, and I, and I think I did a, a nice job remixing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, that would be my favorite. Yeah. So did it, did they ask you specifically to remix that track, or could you choose from a few tracks? No, I think they asked me specifically for for that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and you like the track, so yeah. That, yeah, that's I, might, good. I, I might have chosen that anyway. Yeah. 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 So is there still an artist in whatever kind of genre or an act that you would love to remix one day? Um, yes, of course, again, uh, too many to name, good god. I would. There's many pop acts I would love to uh, to remix. Uh, I really love Coldplay's music, for example. I think some of those tracks could work wonderfully in a dance context. Uh, in terms of dance artists that are active like now, uh, lots of talented people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ben Boehmer is in this Anjuna Deep, more housey, progressive uh, genre. That's someone I really, really admire. Uh, Yolto, Lane 8, and that same sort of sphere. Um, yeah, too yeah. many to name. Yeah, so is that also the kind of music you listen to in your spare time? 
At the moment it is, yeah. At the moment uh, I, I really like listening to that uh, that progressive house melodic sort of sound. I see that as a sort of natural evolution almost of trance, a mm -hmm. more calm version yeah, of, uh, yeah. of the same yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree. Cool. Do you sometimes still listen to your to your old tracks, your old productions yourself? I do, yes. Um, yeah, sometimes I go back to them. Uh, for various reasons, you know, sometimes I, uh, it just randomly pops into my head, it's like, hey, I want to listen to this again. Sometimes I do that to compare to the music I make today. And um, that's interesting too, I mean, I, I made those tracks almost 20 years ago, and I'm a little bit older now, and so the music I make is different too, and when I listen to my music from then, there's a type of energy in it and vigor in it that's difficult for me to reproduce now you know that's it's interesting how that goes so I think in some ways uh, I've become more skilled at the technical aspects of production and stuff uh, but there there's something in those old tracks too that that I think remains relevant that's yeah. difficult for me to reproduce now yeah yeah very true um, is there still something on your bucket list music wise Yes, uh, on my bucket list, uh, definitely a big one is to get a million views on YouTube for uh, for any kind of project, really. But for a, a big track, that would be uh, that would be really nice. Uh, I would love to release an album someday. Like I've never done that, an ar artist album. Um, yeah, and you know, various goals of success and fame and, and gigs and all of it. Yeah. you know the deal. Yeah. Well, never say never. All right. Well, once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. All right, that was it. This week's walk, my interview with Thomas Bronswaar about his classic Constellation. Thomas, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did another interview with Thomas and in that interview he tells the story behind Close Horizon. That interview is online already, so make sure to check it out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye!